Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Today I'm very excited because we have Broadwell E, the Intel i7 6800K 6 core 12 thread processor. I'm very excited. Now, why should you watch this video? Why should you care? Do you want to build a high end, no compromise computer? Do you want maximum performance, maximum capability with no compromises that will do everything you ask? Then you came to the right place. Now, I am going to do a brief summary at the beginning of this video because it's going to be over 10 minutes long and if you don't want to watch the whole thing, I certainly understand. I will then get into the nitty gritty details of why I think this is a great choice, who should consider it, and how it compares to the existing Skylake chips you see on this side of the table. Okay, really briefly, $435. That is the price this processor costs on Amazon.com today in June of 2016 when I am filming this. Prices change over time, but that's what it is today. The motherboard is $225. This is the ASUS X99A USB 3.1 edition of this motherboard. Be aware there are older versions of the X99A motherboard. The X99 chipset has been out for about a year and a half. The high-end enthusiast platform is carried over for more years than the consumer side of things, so this will be carried on for a bit longer yet. This is a revision of the board with new features. It's not just USB 3.1, it has new features. So make sure that if you're getting this, that you get this version of the board and not the original version, which you'll probably find for less money, but isn't worth the savings. Links to that will be on the uh, description below. $225 in Amazon. The combined total of these is $660. For a high-end, no compromises computer, this is an excellent choice. Do you game? Do you game and stream live online on Twitch? Do you game and want the very best you can get that will give you maximum performance and capability with lots of future capability without having to worry about upgrading in the next couple of years? Do you do content creation? Video editing, 3D animation, uh, high-end image editing. This is also for you. Maybe you do a lot of multitasking and you want to be able to run multiple programs at the same time. Or perhaps you want to be able to run background programs while gaming or doing a lot of web browsing while you're streaming. And you simply want a machine that works at 100% without any compromises and you're in this price budget. This is absolutely what I recommend. This solution, in brief, is $180 more than the i7-6700K solution, which is the top end of the consumer Skylake line. These two together are 660. These two together, the i7-6700K and the Z170A motherboard is 480. So it's $180 difference. However, if you look at it in terms of the total price of your computer, your entire tower with your solid state drive, which you should certainly have in a computer like this, graphics card, power supply, case, memory, and everything you have to put in, the percentage is not that bad. For this kind of computer, you are or should be looking at a budget between $1,500 and $2,000 or higher depending on how many things you add to it. You're looking at about a 10% price difference. In between $1,500 to $2,000, $180 is about 10% give or take in terms of total price. What does that 10% get you? All right. This processor, I'll bring this over here, bring them closer. For $180 more to go to Skylake, uh, to go to Broadwell E, the i7-6800K, you get six cores instead of four. 50% more true execution units. You get 15 megabytes of level two cache versus eight megabytes. The motherboard itself you get quad channel RAM instead of dual channel RAM. Latency doesn't change, but throughput does. The memory is twice as fast in transfer on the X99 as it is on the Z170. You get 10 serial ATA ports versus six. You get four X16 slots, you get more USB ports, you just get more of everything. Now, if you're in the market to put together a machine over $1,500, I personally think that the $180 to jump from i7-6700K to i7-6800K, yes, I know there's a lot of numbers, is well worth it. If you aren't wanting to make that jump, 
or perhaps you're wanting to make a lower budget system and you're trying to maybe stay around eleven or twelve hundred dollars I wouldn't buy either one I'd be down at the i5 6600k the reason being is is if you try to squeeze either one of these into a less expensive machine you have to make too many compromises now I am referring to the total cost of the machine as it cost when you bought it. Certainly, if you are taking parts you already own out of a machine, you're not spending that money, but you did at some point. I'm talking about the total value of everything in your computer, regardless of what you're paying for it today. If you have a video card that you're taking out of a machine to move over, you may say, but I don't have to buy a video card. Yeah, but you did at some point. The cost of that video card is still the cost of the machine. So if you have $1,500 worth of stuff, in your tower regardless of when you bought it the hundred and eighty dollar jump here I think is minor details it is true and I know some people are immediately gonna ask wait a minute what about clock speed you didn't talk about clock speed you are correct the base clock speed of the i7 6700k the four core chip is four gigahertz and it turbos to 4.2 the base clock speed of the 6800K is 3.4 gigahertz, turboing to 3.6. Neither one of those numbers matter. They're both K chips. They're both overclockable. Both of these motherboards support automatic overclocking. It works very well. Yes, with hours and hours of tweaking and testing, you can often get an extra 0.1 gigahertz out of chips, maybe 0.2. You can make minor adjustments. In my experience, the automatic overclocking works very well, especially if you pair it with one of these, which I highly recommend. This is a Corsair H115i 280mm liquid cooler. Now, if your case doesn't support 140mm uh, fans and only supports 120, no worries. Get the H110 version of this. It's basically the same thing, just different size. Not the cheapest thing in the world, $105, but it will give you maximum overclock while keeping temperatures down. That keeping the temperatures down will make your chip last for many, many years. If you use air cooling, if you just buy like a $30 or $40 uh, Evo 212 air cooler, for example, and you do maximum overclocks and you get up to 4.5 plus gigahertz or more, yeah, it'll run. But as your temperatures are running hot, you're reducing the life of your chip. Not only will the liquid cooling give you maximum overclock, but it will also give you maximum life. The extra money, considering the entire cost of the machine, I think is pretty reasonable. Furthermore, they're very quiet. I have liquid cooling in two different machines at home and one here in the office, and frankly, I can't hear any of them. When I'm gaming, the fans on the graphics card are by far the loudest thing in the machine. So, if you are considering making the jump from an i5 to an i7 anything, I recommend in June of 2016 that you skip the i7 6700K and go straight to the i7 6800K. For $180, I think the X99 platform is worth it. I think the extra six cores are worth it. I think the extra level two cache is worth it. And I think the fact that when you consider the entire picture, it's not a huge price jump. Let me give you a different way to think of it if you're still having trouble dealing with the whole, oh, I don't wanna spend $180 more. Pretend you are not building a machine, pretend you're buying one. You walk into a store and there's two very nice towers sitting here. Excellent cases, excellent fans, solid state drives, great graphics cards. They're both wonderful machines, just what you would build at home. This one is $1,700. I should put it over here. This one is $1,700. This one is $1,880. But it's 50% faster than that one. If you're already spending $1,700, is spending $1,880 worth it for a 50% speed boost? Yes, that's a deal. That is why I think everybody should be buying these and not that. If you don't think that's a deal, if you don't think you would use the 50% speed boost, why are you buying the $1,700 machine? Buy the $1,200 machine with the i5 in it. Because if you're in this price category, if you're spending over $1,500 on a computer, you might as well have the very best. 
comments, questions, thoughts, feedback. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? That's what the comment section below the video is for. Tell me what you think. It's okay if you disagree with me. The world is wide enough for all of us. Links to all of these items will be in the video description below, both to my previous YouTube videos as well as to Amazon.com. For example, I've previously done a review and unboxing of this. I have a Skylake overview video. I will link to all of those in the description. Almost dropped it. I will link to all those in the description below. If you found this video of value, please use my links when you go to buy this stuff. It is my primary funding source for this channel. I was not given any of this stuff for free. In fact, I just bought this off of Amazon just over a week ago. That is how you can support my channel and what will enable me to keep making videos if you find these beneficial. Speaking of beneficial, if you liked it, give it a like. If you didn't, that's okay. Remember to subscribe to my channel. It's the big red button down there. And if it's already checked, because if it's not red because you've already subscribed, thank you. Now, the next video I shoot, which will post just a couple days after this, will be an unboxing and overview of this motherboard. I will go over its features in great detail. I have previously done an unboxing and overview of this motherboard, and of course that link is already in the description below. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.